All right, welcome back to Metropole Television. My name is Simba Elijah Jones. Can I get this? Is business uh, um, get involved 2146? That's your SMS line at Metropole TBKE across all your social media platforms. Now, let's therefore get talking about the biggest economic headlines that you're waking up to this morning. Now, Kenya Power and Lighting Company KPLC has now transferred the power bill to consumers on any additional losses it, it incurs for electricity acquired from other players in the sector, which does not eventually end up in homes and offices as a result of a system loss. The Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, has already reviewed consumer tariffs and given the green light to the power distributor to recall system losses equivalent to 19.9% of the power it buys from generators from users up from 14.9% a factor that will see the consumer retail prices rise by 20 cents per kilowatt hours. Now Kenya Power recently announced its worst performance in 16 years which saw the firm's net profit plunge 92% from 3.26 billion to 200 and 62 million in the year to June, the lowest profit since it returned to profitability in 2004 after posting a 2.89 billion shillings loss the previous year. Now, the cost of buying electricity from power generators like Kenjin jumped by 18 billion during the period. Now, Kenya Power said, blunting the impact of an increase in sales to customers. Now, Kenya Power had already been calling on an energy regulator to increase tariffs on power in the country. Question being, isn't billing power consumers for a system loss a shortcut to having their wish granted? Is this move really justified and helping us understand this topic? This morning, we are joined by George Menga and Reginald Kazuti. George, I want to pick your two cents on that. It looks like they are finding a way to have the tariffs increased, whether we like it or not. Uh, Simba, that is the unfortunate uh, uh, thing that we are, we are experiencing as a country. And uh, I want to take you to the model that the, 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 the government has in power generation and eventually power distribution. In Kenya, we have, especially that is for electric power, we have those who generate power. That is the like of the likes of GDC, that is Geothermal Development Corporation, the likes of uh, uh, Le Turkana Wind uh, Power Project, the likes of Kengen. And then there is the, 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 the middleman, what I call middleman, who now evacuate that power from the generators now to uh, KPLC. And that is where Ketraco comes, uh, comes in. And then eventually we have KPLC that deals with a distribution, both corporate and, uh, and, and retail. And if you look at that, the, 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 the entire chain, uh, it is controlled by the government, almost uh, 80, 80 something uh, percent uh, control. And if you look at government deficiencies that uh, now get into some of these companies, then you expect the cost of power in Kenya to uh, to, to, to be to be uh, higher vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the region. If you look at the cost of power per kilowatt hour, I mean per megawatt hour, in some of the Afri African countries, I don't want to go to the West or, 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 or Asian countries. If you look at a country like uh, Rwanda, uh, the cost of power is 182.7 per, per megawatt hour. Uganda, it is 152.78. Remember some of these countries were the ones who were supplying them with power. And then uh, look at Tanzania. Tanzania, the cost of power is 98.19 per megawatt hour. And then SA is 74.7 eight per megawatt hour that is usd and then our major competitors when it comes to manufacturing we have south africa which are 74.78 per megawatt hour we have egypt at 73 uh, us dollars per megawatt hour and then we have nigeria at 81.77 uh, usd per megawatt hour that explains to you why some of the corporations that we've previously had in kenya move to either egypt they move to south africa or they move to uh uh, Tanzania or Nigeria in, in West Africa. So I think it's something that uh, the government must come in strongly uh, to, to, to try and address. And if you look at uh, uh, the, the, the initial cost of generating this power is quite low, it's not very expensive. But the only problem we have is the inefficiencies that are now uh, built in as you evacuate that power from the point of generation to the point of distribution. And those, in, those inefficiencies are, uh, are eventually loaded on 
to uh, the consumer. That is why the cost of power has been very high uh, in Kenya, despite the cost of uh, fuel having been quite low between the last quarter of 2019 up to up to date. Our cost of electricity is still quite uh, quite high, uh, quite high. But the other, the, the flip side again is that despite the fact that the cost of power is high, uh, KPLC, which is a monopoly. Uh, as reported mixed results, uh, from 2017, they reported 5.2 billion profit, which is a very good profit. When they came to 2018, that profit went down to Kenya Shillings 1.9 uh, billion, and then it went down, went up again to 3.26 billion in 2019. And then lately in 2020, it has gone down by over 80% to 262 uh, uh, million. And all, all, over, over 2019, 2020, you've heard of cases of corruption that have been that have been dealt with this uh, uh, this corporation and therefore that explains to you where our money is going our money is not going into power generation or into 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 into, into uh, distribution but our money is going into the pockets of a few of a few individuals the other thing that i must mention before uh, before i let you is Remember, we were trying to develop uh, green power. That is where Electrocana Wind Power Project uh, uh, came in. It was a good idea, fantastic uh, concept uh, paper. The, uh, the, 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 the the execution uh, was excellent but the, the company behind this project that is the electrocana wind power project limited uh, had a clause in their contract that i don't know if government functionaries realized or if they didn't realize the the, the, the clause was that once they have generated the power the government has to pay them even if the power has not been evacuated now to consumers that power has not been has, has not been evacuated. I think up to as late as last month, but the government has continued to uh, to pay for that power, even though it is not it is not using it. That is why you are seeing uh, KPLC trying to sneak in. Let me use that word: trying to sneak in those costs to the, cons the to the to the retail consumers and to the corporate cons uh, consumers. Uh, Elijah. Pretty much. And now, Reginald, I want to get your sentiments on this as well this morning because, well, George says. We are not paying for the power. In fact, we're not even paying for power generation. Now, Kenya Power is saying that they have something they're calling a system laws. Power they buy, but does not get to us, but you've got to pay for it, even if it doesn't get to us. Is, is this a way they're trying to increase the power costs in the country after failed attempts to see this back then? Um, I would agree with George um, Simba on this. Um, the, the efficiency of our, our electricity generation and distribution in the country is, is below par when you look at um, sub-Saharan Africa, so so to speak. If, if you look at the statistics of sub-Saharan Africa and you look at the, the transmission and distribution loss, uh, the, the average sub-Saharan Africa average, Kenya is above that. We lose close to 18 to 20% uh, TX and DX in terms of um, uh, losses that we make during transmission or uh, distribution. If you then also look at the, the number of kilometers of, of transmission lines that have been um, put, Kenya is also very way below um, the sub-Saharan Africa um, average and, 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 and standard. And if you also look at now installed capacity per, 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 per million people in terms of megawatts, Kenya is also up around 15, number 16 in, in Africa. So our, our electricity situation in the country is not in any way efficient uh, to the levels of the size of the economy that Kenya uh, Kenya has. So it is true, we actually do lose power in distribution and in transmission. Um, whether it is right to put that cost to um, the, the user, then, then, then that's now a, a different conversation. It is not fair for, for me to pay for what I have not used. Um, Kenya Power has already uh, had issues of um, problems with uh, corruption and fraud, even in the billing of what they are claiming that you have used, where we have had people paying for double, triple uh, the amounts that they uh, say that they've used because of using estimates and, and all. So yes, if they are going to have to pass down that cost, it will then have ripple effects into, into the economy. Um, because shocking enough, as you might want to know, as much as we've been talking about the last line and all, only 22% of the Kenyan population uses electricity for lighting. Only 22%. Um, that's, that's the level of people that actually consume electricity. 
uh, households that consume electricity for, for lighting. If you look at those 22%, those are the 22% that are most probably also in the formal uh, in employment. So what happens when you pass down that cost to that 22% um, uh, that, that are using electricity? You're going to start reducing their disposable income because they have to pay higher um, electricity bills. As they start paying higher electricity bills, their disposable income reduces. What happens when disposable income reduces? That means that uh, the ability to save and consume also reduces in the economy and you will have ripple effects um, that will also hit the economy which is already on its on its knees all right now i just want to drop in a washington the girl who has just joined us in uh, this morning into the conversation now washington yes it looks as if kenya power has actually been granted that green light to increase power costs in the country on something they're calling a system loss do you feel that this move is justified? Um, no, I agree with my two colleagues. The whole point of this country is that the 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 Kenya power system, as far as the generation and even the concern. That's where I want this system to And, and, and I mean, look at this way. Look at all the changes we have of impact of the uh, electricity going to the very top of course to go to. There's all these issues of the uh, illegal part disconnection that the uh, Kenya power is always uh, uh, having this whole cost. I mean, yes, I mean, Washington. Yeah. Washington. We seem to have a, a, a difficult a difficulty in your audio this morning. Let's just fix it, and then we're going to come back to that because we're still on the topic now. George, uh, the company's results uh, to Jonah indicate an increase in nano fuel power purchase costs by a whopping 18 billion. Now, if you look at that, that's a 34.1% jump from the 52.7 billion to 70.8 billion. Do you see this as an area of concern, especially considering that there has been an increase in electricity generation capacity, particularly on geothermal power, which is loaded onto Kenya? power purchase cost as a capacity hey. charge. Yeah, hey. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me say this, uh, Elijah. And first things first, um, I, if, if I was to drill down to, uh, to the cost of, of power in Kenya and uh, the, 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 the happenings at, uh, at, 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 at KPLC, I would want to narrow it down to uh, the Electrocana power, uh, power Project. Electrocana Power Project 1 was very expensive. It got up billions of shillings. And I think be, 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 by, by the time they cleared at the time now the evacuation started, it took like almost 24, uh, 24 months. And the government had to pay uh, that money. How did the government pay uh, that money? Remember there's a time that we had a problem with the billings. I don't know if you can... If you can remember, you can remember that I think it was early last, uh, early last year, uh, going into the quarter two of of, of last year, uh, the government was trying to recoup that cost so that they can be able to pay Electrocana uh, Wind Power Project uh, Limited. Two. Uh, the demand for power vis-a-vis -vis the supply, uh, there's a mismatch. Uh, there's a, mis a mismatch there. Uh, you, you realize that retail consumers are not are, are not are not that heavy. They're not very heavy consumers. But the corporate consumers, on the other hand, on the other hand, cannot consume all the power that we generate uh, in Kenya. So they feel that con that, 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 that consume uh, their bills or or the, the, the way that the tariffs are is such that they, they, they're supposed to, uh, to 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 pay for the cost of all the in, 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 the, in the country. We pumped a lot of money in power generation without looking at the demand uh, the demand side, uh, if I was to put it that way. So the challenge is on uh, on, 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 on the government to ensure that we match, we match supply of power vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the demand. The companies, the, the companies that you can call the heavy uh, power user companies are not very many in, in Kenya. And most of them are, 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 are dominated, I mean, are, 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 are considered in, in Nairobi and Nairobi metro metropolis. If you go to the countryside, there are very, very few uh, heavy power uh, power users. So that has to be has to be uh, addressed. And then finally, uh, Elijah, 
we have a lot of inefficiencies from right from uh, from generation that is at Kengen level at uh, GDC level at uh, electric canal power project level uh, then we have it at the point of this, I mean, from evacuation, that is at Ketraco. Remember, these are government agencies. And then eventually at the distribution level, that is uh, KPLCs. So if government was had to address those inefficiencies along that uh, value chain, then our cost of power will come uh, tumbling down quite uh, quite heavily. Remember, we are con competing in a country like Ethiopia. And the cost of power per megawatt hour in Ethiopia is just 24.4 USD uh, per hour. That is almost uh, 10 times lower than what we charge in Kenya. Why would a company still be operating in Kenya when they can uh, access power at $24 per, 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 per megawatt uh, hour in Ethiopia? It doesn't make it doesn't make a, a lot of sense. So I think government must work on this if they are to achieve the eventual goal of increasing our power generation uh, in, this, in, in this decade. Yes. Uh, Reginald, uh, I also want your two cents on this. Now, when you specifically look at those numbers, and KPLC is telling us that non-power purchase costs are the ones that have increased by 34.1% to 70B. And this is the same, same company telling you we're turning in losses, but most of our expenditure is going into non-power purchases. What, what, do you, what do you read into that specific area? Uh, inefficiency. Um, an, an organization does not only have to manage their top line, which is revenue. Uh, you can be a very good revenue generating organization, but if you're not managed to able to, to manage your, your, your cost of operations, uh, then you realize you become an inefficient uh, organization. And, and, and it is um, a sad affair for most parastatals uh, that if you look at how they operate, you realize that they are the, the cost of running the parastatal is more than the cost of delivering the service they are, uh, they are supposed to uh, to deliver, which becomes very worrying to, to us, especially knowing that now they want to make KQ a parastatal as well. Uh, are we going to start going into into the same direction? So if you look at uh, example Safaricom, which is pretty much 40% uh, owned by, uh, by the government, um, their top line continues to grow, but they manage to manage their operating expenditure. When you see a business where the operating expenditure is growing faster than revenue, um, then definitely you are going to run um, some serious losses. So at this point, the government needs to come out and say, is Kenya Power supposed to be profit making? If they do not want it to be profit making, then they delist it from the Nairobi Stock Exchange and make it a service to the, um, um, uh, to, to the community where we will not be looking at their books to see whether they're making a profit. And the government says our job is to provide electricity and, and, and not to make a profit um, out of it. Then it's a decision they need to make. But if they want to run it as a profitable organization like other electricity generating um, uh, companies everywhere, Management, they need to put in a proper board, uh, they need to do a complete audit whether they have the people with the right skills to run an organization. And the appointments at Kenya Power need to stop being political appointments, but they need to be appointments of people who are qualified to actually do the job. Yes. Now, Washington, I know you're back. Let's pick your sentiments on that as well. The question to you was, yes, it seems as if now Kenya Power have been given that green light to charge more for the power costs in the country. Do you think that this move is justified going by the fact that this is a company that is at its worst point in 16 years? Well, just like my, my colleague uh, Wimbaya has said, uh, I, I found him talking. I didn't hear what George uh, uh, what George said, but uh, it's very very true. We need we need Kenya Power needs to be done away with. I mean, as a as a monopoly, so to speak. And you see, there's one thing about economics. What, what do you say about monopolies? Monopolies are very very wasteful, and monopolies should not be something that actually should be a profit making organization. And that is exactly the reason why we are having Kenya Power. I mean, the government saying that. They have to increase the, 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 the price of um, electricity so they can make profits. You cannot break, make profits by force, you know? You cannot force, uh, you cannot increase uh, power. Uh, the people cannot pay, pay more for power so that they can project profits so that the shareholders can get profit. That is wrong. That is wrong. And, 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 and for monopoly, I mean, just like uh, we may have said, if the government wants Kenya Power to be uh, a profit-making company, why don't they open up the floor? 
what all the people they feel for every other uh, uh, anyone else to generate electricity and they can uh, compete like anyone else because it being a monopoly it's very very wrong it's actually abusing the government is actually abusing its power by the way by actually making people pay more for electricity it's making actually people now shift to more uh, 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 alternative sources of electricity for example solar power i've met i've met quite some few guys by there who don't have anything to do with kenya power they're doing strictly solar you, you invest a lot and keep away from and, and it's not even efficient in distribution even even in management you're always having power blackouts a whole day going you know how 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 how, how fair is this to the consumers that's a big point we have here you know Yes. All right. Now, just to clear this conversation there from uh, George Manga, I just want to get also your two cents on this. Now, we do know, and this is a very big concern, George, I mean, from where you're sitting this morning. Now, the manufacturers in the country were just crying the other day when we really see in the finance bill that they were supposed to pay more for power again just a couple of months when they were given the reprieve. Here comes now, you're waking up this morning. Now, the finance bill is saying that you have to pay more. Fine, we lost that. Now, another reason, another headline that you're going to pay more again. I mean, for anybody watching this as an investor and for anybody in the Kenyan economy right now, what ripple effect do we now associate this to? Uh, Elenia, Elenia, I want to refer you back to our Vision 2030 uh, blueprint that was a very critical document uh, for me as an, as an economist. Uh, if you look at the Vision 2030 blueprint that was uh, in the NAC uh, regime, then one of the key aspects, one of the key drivers was manufacturing. And uh, if they were to deliver manufacturing, then they were to consider uh, the cost of power as one of the critical uh, costs in manufacturing. And that is how uh, we, we, as a country, we, designed, we decided to increase our generating capacity of power so that we could supply power to our corporations, who would then now be able to, uh, to, 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 to scale up their, their, their operations and therefore employ more, employ more, uh, more youth. That was a brilliant uh, idea. When it came to execution, then uh, we started well. Remember when uh, when we, when when Ketrak was formed, when GDC was formed, when Kenjen was formed. These were noble noble ideas, and I think we were able to uh, to, to increase our power generation uh, to a level where we could now support our corporation. The the, the, the journey the journey uh, stopped. Or the, the the journey the journey. Uh, uh, became uh, tough when uh, now government functionaries uh, decided to get into some of these uh, corporations and try to uh, to 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 uh, to to, uh, to, to co-own uh, these corporations to buy shares into these corporations. What that entails is that these guys go in there with a prof uh, profiteering mindset uh, in them, and that is what has uh, now built into the inefficiency that we are uh, that we are seeing. If you, if you look at, uh, I always refer to the Turkana uh, wind power project. If you look at uh, the shareholding of that company, then it tells you why that clause was allowed even to pass. Because I believe there are people who did uh, the business evolution survey, there are people who did the visibility survey, and that clause for any person reading that, that contract would have easily picked it up. Because normally projects like this, the way they operate, is that you clear your project, maybe by the time it is launched, it is 24 to 36 months. Therefore, how do I, as a consumer or as a purchaser of this product, pay you for a product that I'm not consuming? I think that is something that uh, government uh, intentionally allowed in that contract so that people could profiteer from this, uh, for, for, from this project. But uh, what I want to say is that all is not, all is not lost. I think we need to re-engineer KPLC. We need to re-engineer some of these power generation companies and then Ketrako so that we can deliver power to, uh, to the consumer. I believe we can deliver power to, the, to, to our consumer at less than $50 per megawatt hour. And that will go a long way in uh, ensuring up our manufacturing sector and eventually employment in the country. Pretty much. Therefore, George, on that, we take a short break, gentlemen. It's interesting that George is saying that all is not lost at Kenya Power, that it's possible for us to re-engineer Kenya Power. Reginald, once we come back, I'll pick you two cents on that as well, because as we do know, there is a management crisis at Kenya Power right now. As we do know of it, we have no board on board at KPLC. Once we come back, we continue with this conversation. <laughs> 